was demonstrated by Kokra and Walton in 1932 experimentally. 1879. Albert Einstein was born. 1884. Scientific curiosity. At the age of five, Albert Einstein becomes fascinated by his father's compass. Later in life, Einstein will look back at this as this is the inception to his scientific curiosity. I'm always a big fan of people who make a major contribution outside their particular field of study. They arrive at their destination without taking the pre-established route. Back in the early part of the 20th century, the German system of education and professorship and promotion was quite rigid. In Einstein's case, he only had an undergraduate education, and even with that, he had not been expected to particularly excel, either by his peers or the professors under which he studied. He got a job outside of academia, working as a patent clerk, trying to make ends meet. And at age 26, working on nights and weekends, he dropped four scientific papers representing the single greatest leap forward since Newton. And yet, once they were published, it's taken over a hundred years for their full significance, their effect in reshaping our view of the world to fully be realized. 1915, General Theory of Relativity. In it, he determined that massive objects cause a distortion in space-time, which is felt as gravity. In 1919, a major expedition was sent to the South Atlantic to observe a solar eclipse. This was going to be the first empirical test of Einstein's theory of relativity, the first time it was tested in the physical world rather than just checking the math. Upon being informed that the scientific data matched the theory, he pronounced, you're surprised? I knew that it had to be so. And then when asked, but what would you have done, sir, if the result had been different? Einstein replied, then I would have had to feel sorry for God. The theory is correct. Those were cocky words, which could have come across as rude or egotistical, except that Einstein himself was known as an extremely humble, humble man. Later in life, he parlayed his fame not into the accumulation of material wealth, but into humanism and a desire to end war and hate. He had no need for fame per se, and as his life neared its end, he took active steps to curtail the cult of personality that had grown up around him. He wanted to ensure in particular that his home would not become a shrine or a museum. He demanded that it remain in private ownership so that someone else could live there after he was gone. And yet despite his best efforts, he has become an iconic figure, both as a thinker, as a humanist, and as a wonderful human being.